Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. I want to give you guys a very quick, uh, some quick announcements really quick. One, uh, for those of you guys that follow my social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok, uh, please be careful of fake accounts. There's like tons of fake accounts uh, reaching out to you guys, letting you guys know that, hey, I got a message um, from Spirit. I don't do that, you guys. So please be mindful of that. If you ever get those types of messages, report those accounts. It is not me. Um, if you're interested in following any of my social media, you can come here to my YouTube channel, click on the description box, and you will be able to see all my social medias. Um, these are my personal social medias. Like I said, I do not message anyone, so please be mindful of that. Also, I am so excited to announce that our book line is finally coming out. I have been working on this project for quite some time now, almost two years, and we are finally releasing journals. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, purchase uh, gratitude journals that helps you uh, really vibrate and raise your vibration uh, for those of you guys that are trying to manifest, that are trying to draw into you uh, things that you want to experience in this lifetime. Those gratitude journals are crucial and very important. Anyone that knows about automatic writing, anyone that knows about manifestations, you know the power behind these journals. So I have made those available to you guys, the gratitude journal, as well as the 369 manifestation journal. Um, the 369 book journal is uh, the same, but primarily focuses on the 369. Um, and it is uh, basically to be able to manifest whatever it is that you desire, uh, maintaining the focus and putting that energy, um, as well as, like I said, finally my book being released in May, uh, May 5th, 2023. It is called Manifest Your Destiny. And this is uh, a book. It is a book that is primarily focused on uh, explaining to those of you guys that are perhaps not that aware of how manifestations work, how the law of attraction works, how magic literally uh, works. Uh, it's the mechanics behind it. Um, and I will also, you'll be able to find in that book, personal experiences that we've been through that <laughs> Uh, we have experience with clients that we have seen or that me myself has experienced um, to be able to really connect with you guys in the most personal way. Like I said, it is about the mechanics behind uh, manifesting whatever it is that you want into your life. But also, I will be giving you um, experiences that we've been through as well as very, very powerful exercises and tools that you guys can put into your everyday life to be able to experience that magic in your life. So you guys definitely put that down in your calendar, May 5th, 2023. You'll be able to purchase that on Amazon. All the descriptions will, or sorry, all the links will be in the description box below. So we are very excited about the journals. You guys are able to purchase that now. It's already live. Um, like I said, if you guys know anything, it doesn't matter if you're into the practice or if you're into manifesting or if you're a newbie and you don't even know how it works or what it is, you can purchase that book that will be coming out, Manifest Your Destiny, May 5th, 2023. All right, my lovelies, as you guys know, I do everything with love and with you guys in mind, giving you guys all the tools and the knowledge that we have acquired and experienced. Uh, to be able to teach you guys and give you basically the power um, or remind you of your power that you possess within you. All right, so let's get into the love readings, what you guys are here for. <laughs> All right, my lovelies, we're going to begin here with Taurus because Taurus season is about to commence in the next coming three days. So for you Taurus out there, brightest of blessings, my lovelies. Let's get into your reading. Let's see what's going on in regards to love and romance. We're going to look into new love as well as the old flame spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels. I ask you to step forward. Allow me to open up as a vessel of communication. Let it be you who speaks through me. Allow me to see here since you and receive the messages here for Taurus, sun, moon, rising, and Venus regarding love. Please speak to us about new love as well as the old flame. Give us three cards for each spirit. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, we got cards flying out, you guys. 
All right, let's begin. Let me get this one really quick. How are you guys doing, by the way? Are you guys surviving this as Saturn in Pisces as well as uh, Pluto in Aquarius? As for myself, we are experiencing a lot of craziness, you guys. I cannot even just crazy shit happening left and right within the family dynamic, toxic traits, all of that just chaos. But I am very hopeful and I know that sometimes people need that push um, to be able to make changes in their lives so hoping for the best i know that everything is in perfect timing all right so let's begin taurus your first card here in regards to new love um you have the queen of wands you have the nine of cups and the five of swords now in regards to the old love we have the full card we have the six of swords and we have the ace of wands okay so let's begin first here with your new love so the queen of wands may represent a person that is very they are very stuck in their who they are right they're they're very self-aware this is a person that is very intense very passionate there is definitely a lot of physical attraction in this connection and um for some of you guys you may be dealing with a fire energy so it'd be a leo sag or an aries now, Nine of Cups does indicate having the desire, the want to see how far this connection or this relationship can go. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I feel like in this connection, ego maybe or pride may be involved here. This could be you or this could be the person that you're dealing with. It could be a person that perhaps has some healing to do um, in regards to their shadow self. Uh, it could represent a person that could be very impulsive. Uh, someone that uh, once their feelings are hurt, it's like the pride comes up. So ego may be an issue in this connection. However, it does have the potential for um, for being able to be very fulfilling, very exciting. There's a lot of intensity here and a lot of passion. I would, however, advise that if you start to see a bit of red flags in this connection, when we're talking about temperament or pride, uh, might be something that you might want to check that person or that you create very, very visible boundaries um, just so that they don't think that they can mold you. I don't want you to lose yourself in this connection, Taurus, especially because it's so exciting for you. Um, so they are telling you it does have the potential and they are definitely interested. There's a lot of you know chemistry here, but it is important to uh, create those respectful boundaries if you don't want them to cross them at a later time uh, so that the energy can flow more organically. Okay, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to the old love here. We have the full card, the six of swords and the ace of wands. So this is talking to me about um, really, the, I feel like your partner, the person you were dealing with in the past has moved on. This is a person that doesn't sit there and wait Um this is not the type of energy of a person that likes to heal. Uh, so I feel like perhaps for some of you guys ending this connection, you found out or heard that they were already moving on or that they were dating or seeing someone. And this is to no surprise because this is a, a bit of immature energy, very impulsive energy, but I feel like they've moved on. So if you're still holding on or hoping for the best, um, Taurus, I would highly encourage you to just keep it pushing. I think that you dodged a bullet. Not only that, but they are telling you that the, the quicker you are able to release this person and move on, the better you'll go on to much better things or a better partner that's more ideal for you. Okay, my lovelies. All right, so let's go now to Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini here. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for new love as well as old flame. Give me three cards for each spirit. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love and old flame. If you guys like these readings, like, share, and comment. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. All right, here we go, Gemini. So for your new love, we have the moon here. You may be dealing with a maybe dealing with the Pisces. Cancer or Scorpio energy, water energy very heavily here. We have the King of Cups as well as the Four of Pentacles. I feel that the person you're dealing with, you may already start to notice 
um, that they're not being completely like transparent. Uh, you may be feeling a bit weary, a bit like what's really going on, almost like they're double dealing or you don't know very much about their life or their personal life, I should say, that has you a little bit guarded, a, a little bit in uh, not very still or very calm waters. It's almost like there is a bit of anxiousness to this connection, Taurus. Um, sorry, Gemini. Uh, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Taurus. Um, but I feel that there is a lot that you don't know about Gemini, about the partner, the person that you're dealing with. I feel like they haven't been completely honest with you. I feel like this person is very good at getting you emotionally connected with them or emotionally invested in them when they give very little about their personal space or their personal life. It's the type of person that sits there for hours asking you or grilling you about questions um, and really enjoys you oversharing. But when it comes to them, they're not very comfortable with answering questions. So if you're dealing with this type of energy, my advice is protect your heart, Gemini. You don't want to overshare, give too much of yourself or overextend yourself to, uh, to a person that perhaps doesn't really know what they want. I'm going to be honest. I feel like this person doesn't really, doesn't really know what they want. Um, there's just this energy of indecisiveness. It's a person that does not have any control over the emotional sphere. So it's very immature type of energy to me. So again, I would advise just to be careful with that. Um, because I feel like this person could potentially have issues with either manipulation or emotional tactics, like they over bomb you with love. And then all of a sudden they go, you know, they go missing or they don't respond to you. They don't make themselves accessible to you only because that creates the desire within you to want to either chase or to want to uh, connect with them, right? The desire of they're not around, they're always busy. This creates a bit of mystery it creates a bit of desire to want to chase to want to get to know them more but i feel that this is a tactic so if you feel you're already experiencing that my advice is just back up uh, bring it back to yourself focus on you uh, if this person is not willing to make you somewhat of a priority then don't waste your time now when we're talking about old love here gemini we have the queen of cups we have the five of wands and we have the four of cups. I feel like the person from your past may be someone that comes back around or reaches out whenever they don't have a lot of excitement going on in their life. I feel that it's not necessarily because they are missing you or because they are thinking of you. I think this is a person that craves attention. So the fact that they reach out or that they try to reach out to see if you're still reciprocating that type of energy only gives them the idea or the notion that you're still hung up on them, my advice is next time this person reaches out, even if you haven't heard from them in a while, don't be surprised if you do. Uh, Five of Wands is very chaotic energy and it does speak to me about very impulsive. Um, so if you do hear from them or they do reach out, my advice is don't reciprocate that energy. Um, of course, if you're not, if you're kind of over them, which hopefully you are, um, but if you're still hoping, again, like I said, pay more attention to their actions. If they are continuously texting you throughout the day and then tomorrow you don't hear from them, it's because their attention is elsewhere. This is a person that has a very short attention span. So again, my advice is move on from this connection, Gemini. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love, give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Cancer. Your first card here is the Emperor card. This is for your new love, Nine of Swords and the Four of Wands. Okay, <laughs> Cancer, if you feel right now that there's a lot of uncertainty, like this person is not um, being consistent with you, I feel like your mind, like you're getting the best of yourself, basically. You're kind of rattling yourself in this panic mode of 
why aren't they reaching out or why aren't they communicating or why aren't they opening up? You just have to give it time. I feel that this person is very, very much into like who they are. They know who they are. They're still trying to get to know you or they're still trying to see if you are ideally the partner that they're looking for. Um, there is definitely a lot of physical attraction here and a lot of desire to want to see it through, right? To want to become something much more stronger. Um, but I feel like maybe you suffer from anxiety. Maybe this is post-traumatic. Maybe this has to do with the past, with rejection or feeling like if things start to change up a little bit, even in the routine, it's almost like you go into this panic mode. So what Spirit is telling you is, when you're experiencing all of this, it could potentially have to do with past experiences, something you have to heal within yourself, Cancer. I feel like sometimes you can become your worst enemy, um, whether it's because your mind just goes on this, you know, like I said, panic mode and constantly, give me one second, because I am really like, this glare is kind of annoying me. Let me try to bring it down a bit. Give me one second. Trying to get the glare out. Oh, that's too, well, I think this works kind of, right? <laughs> okay, so what I was saying is I feel like you go into this panic mode and it's like constantly thinking of the worst case scenario. What Spirit is telling you is this has to do with healing trauma that you need to weather through or that you need to learn to release. Um, I'm going to be honest. I feel like this person knows what they want. They just want a bit of consistency. So again, if you guys are experiencing like an example, you guys often uh, have misunderstandings. It could potentially be because you guys have a very different language in regards to how you communicate, or it could literally be like a, a language barrier for some of you, but it is speaking to the desire still being there of wanting to see how far it goes. Um, but this is a person that, to them, structure is very important. So <clears throat> as an example, if you're the cancer that likes to have fun, um, sometimes pushing the boundary a little bit too much, they may be very interested in you and the connection is there, but they may be weary that maybe you're more of a like a wild card and they're trying to still figure out if it's like if they want to go through that. I feel this is a mature person. So some of you guys may be dealing with an older person. For others of you, you just may be dealing with an old soul, a person that is um, older than their eight, that their physical age. Um, but I feel like this person really wants structure. So what initially, what I was hearing when I seen the Nine of Swords was kind of stop overthinking because you become your worst enemy. You create a lot of blockages that are not there. So again, we go back to letting go and releasing of past experiences, Cancer. All right, now let's go to your old flame here. We have the Hierophant, we have the Ace of Swords, and we have the Seven of Pentacles. So your person or your ex is definitely still not over you. They are still wanting or having the desire to reach out. For some of you guys, you may be hearing from them. For some of you, you may already have heard from them. And I feel like they're reminiscing and really thinking about the past. I feel like they're still clinged up on you. They're still hung up on you. They haven't really moved on. There is still a desire to want to, can we go to where we were? Can we reconnect? Can we have an open conversation? So not sure how this relationship ended cancer, but I feel like this person, if they weren't prepared for higher elevation of commitment, Something transpired in their life that has them really reflecting and internalizing. I feel like this person is as ready as they're going to be for a long-term type of commitment. So for some of you guys, it could be that this ex is definitely coming back and they're definitely coming back ready to win you through commitment. So it's almost like if, if they weren't committed or if they, you know, whatever situation was that you felt they were just not giving 100% or 50%, I feel like they're coming back around and they're really wanting to show you, to prove to you something. So whether it's the proving of I am committed to you, I do want this, or whether it's I am committed to uh, kind of winning you back 
uh, is the type of energy I'm sensing. And for those of you guys that are already in communication with this person, I feel like it does have promise. The ball is in your court, Cancer, depending on where you're at at this point in your life. So, okay, now let's go to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to Neo Love. Give me three cards for Neo Love, three cards for Old Flame for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to Love. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. So in regards to your new love, Leo, you have the Six of Wands. You have the Two of Wands. And you have the Ace of Wands. Wow, okay. So for a lot of you Leos, um, I feel like very strongly for some of you guys, you have not met this new person that's coming into your life, but they are definitely coming in. I feel like they're coming in more so in the beginning of May, um, but they're coming in strong. This is a person that the moment they see you is going to be an immediate physical attraction, and this is towards you as well. You're going to be feeling the goosebumps. You're going to be feeling the excitement. The moment your eyes lock in, you guys are definitely feeling and vibing each other. I feel like for some of you guys, I'm seeing you guys almost meeting this person and like eyes locking across a room. So for some of you guys, you will be meeting this new person that's coming into your life in a social outing or some type of gathering where um, you guys just happen to be at the same place uh, at the same time. Um, so it's almost like uh, it's giving me very spontaneous type of energy, almost like you didn't plan it. It was last minute type of thing. Um, but I definitely do see you guys kind of like seeing or feeling each other like across the room from each other, if that makes sense. So um, if you're not dealing with anyone right now, Leo, that's quickly going to be changing. And I feel like this is a beginning of a new cycle for a lot of you, um, as it is speaking about a lot of intensity and a lot of passion. When I see a lot of wands, it's very fierce type of energy. It's the type of vibe of they know they, the moment they see you, they know they want you and they're all in type of thing. And I feel like, Again, every time I'm shown a lot of wands and in this card, the three of them are wands, it's indicating to me that maybe there's been a bit of lack of excitement or a bit of stagnation in your love life. And that's quickly, like I said, going to be changing. I feel like from the months of May all the way to July, it's going to be very exciting for some of you guys, even the more reserved Leos, you may be entertaining more than one person. I feel like you're going to definitely have options. So uh, very exciting type of energy there. And like I said, it does have a promise for something um, more stable. It is like, like I said, it, the, the chemistry, the connection is definitely going to be there. And I feel like this person is a person that knows what they want and they go after it until they attain it or until they achieve it. So I feel like this person's goal is to actually bring something to the relationship, which is ideal um, because it indicates a person willing to basically give you the world or willing to show you that they're all in. So very beautiful energy here, Leo. All right, now let's look into your past, the past person in your life. You have the three of cups, the nine of pentacles, and the six of pentacles. For some of you guys, you could have been dealing with a person that perhaps had commitment issues. For others of you, it could have been a person that either stepped out of the relationship or they made it seem like <clears throat> there was a lot of stagnation, can get on the same page. But in reality, they were kind of seeking freedom. And I feel like this person thought, almost like they thought that they would be able to move on from you or that they would, and maybe they had this face where they were like uh, dealing with multiple people or just having fun or having, you know, enjoying their freedom. But I see them almost like, kind of internalizing and when the party is gone when the people are gone you go to bed with yourself and this person is tossing and turning thinking about you thinking about how it was in the relationship uh, perhaps even thinking about how they pushed it to the point of being comfortable in that relationship like there was an, an equal exchange of give and take I feel like for a lot of you guys it could have been you that overdid or that overextended yourself for this person, I feel regret 
more than anything. It's like everything was fine and dandy and I thought I was having the best time of my life. But then I realized I'm all alone. Friends that were friends or that were there that I thought were friends are not really friends. And there is this feeling of loneliness, this feeling of, you know, my life is is not the same. It, it's lonely is what I'm hearing. So I don't feel that this person has moved on. I feel like this person perhaps tried to um, not feel. And a lot of the times people do that in a way of trying to use anything as a form of escapism, whether it was through drinking, whether it was through partying, whatever the situation was. But I feel like they're having this awakening of realizing that their life could have gone a very different route should they have put effort or if they would have stood with you. So it's almost like they're just now realizing your value and they're just now realizing that they mistreated you or didn't really, they kind of took you for granted. Um, so I see them kind of in their, in your energy, thinking of you, missing you. For some of you guys, you're thinking about them. All of a sudden, um, they will pop in your head. And it's not that you're missing them, Leo. It's that you're picking up on their energy because they're kind of obsessing about the past. They're kind of obsessing about where they went wrong in this relationship. So I don't see them moved on. But like I said, I feel like sometimes people, you know, think that the grass is greener on the other side until it's not. Uh, and that's a rude awakening. And I feel like that's what they're currently going through. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are interested in any personal readings or any type of working or <clears throat> any of our services, go ahead and click the link on the description box below. It will take you to our online store as well as you'll be able to find all the links to all my social medias or any of the journals and books that we have out. Oh, we got cards flying. All righty. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. Virgo, we have the nine of wands. We have the three of pentacles and the four of wands. Okay. So what I'm seeing, Virgo, is for some of you guys, you may be going through a situation where someone is definitely very guarded. I feel like I feel like it's your energy, Virgo. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Um, it's almost like you're wanting and, and I feel and I'm going to say this. I don't see this usually in Virgo readings. Um, I feel like you're being guarded because you're at a point in your life where you're tired of the games or you're tired of wasting your time, you've come to realize or you've come to understand the value that you have and that you bring to a relationship. So I feel like you're being mindful of the effort that they're putting. And if they're not putting effort, you have no problem closing the door or walking away. Now, for some of you guys, you're still going through this energy, right? Of trying to figure out, well, are they putting effort or are they just talking about it and not doing nothing about it? So I'm very proud of you, Virgo. If you are dealing with this type of energy, you've had enough and you're like, I know what the hell I bring to the table. If you're not going to put energy, there's the door. Um, because I see you very empowered, Virgo. Unfortunately, I see you empowered because you've had enough. And this speaks to past experiences or through a cycle in your life where you're realizing I am done repeating the same cycle. I've learned it. And at this point, it's through actions. I feel like that's what you're wanting, what you're desiring to see the you're you're not really listening to the words no more. You're paying attention to the actions. I feel like the person that you're dealing with right now may be a bit reserved because they find it difficult to read you or they find it difficult to kind of give in because they're scared that maybe you're not as emotionally available. But the good thing is that this is how you weed out the ones that are not there for the genuine connection. Because if it's something superficial, if they see that the energy is not reciprocated, they will 
walk away, right? And go give their attention somewhere else. But if it's a person that has genuine and authentic feelings for you, they're going to be like, okay, I'm going to win them over, right? I'm going to put effort. I'm going to show them I'm interested. That's how we weed out the fakes or how you weed out the ones that are not there with good intentions. And I feel that you're going about it the right way. Though you may feel like right now restriction may be, or communication, sorry, may be restricted. This is a good thing because I feel like the test that you guys are currently going through in this connection has to do with vocalizing uh, and being able to express your feelings. Um, But it also gives the opportunity to the partner to learn to communicate or to understand your love language. And I feel that this is, it has major potential for something more stable. Um, it could be almost like the scenario of it's, we're kind of in a weird place right now. Don't really know what's going on. He's here. She's acting a bit awkward. I'm acting a bit awkward, but pushing through this is going to bring you guys closer. And then it becomes something more stable or more consistent or the effort is being met. So I feel like it has great potential. If you are currently going through a situation where you feel like you're kind of confused about the situation, give it time. It's going to work itself out. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to your old love, old flame. We have the nine of swords, the king of cups and the king of pentacles. Ooh, interesting. I see them stressed. I see them stressed and very much in their head potentially could be because they're either aware that you're dealing with someone else or um, you may already be with someone else and I feel like they feel the pressure. It's the energy of, I didn't want you in the moment, but now that you're taken or now that there's someone that's roaming you, it's like, you're my prize. They see it as like, you're mine. So don't be surprised if you if they're constantly messaging you or they constantly start to message you. They're just trying to come back into your life because they see that you're either moving on or that you're getting ready to move on. Know your worth, Virgo. If this is an ex that starts to pester you, just know without a doubt that it could be because rumors came to them that you're either dealing with someone or that you've moved on and now they want you. Now they want the prize, right? Because they know that someone else is wanting you. So I don't feel like it's from a genuine standpoint. So my advice is close the door on that. Keep it pushing. If you have found someone or are dealing with someone, put your put your energy in that because that's the investment. This other person from the past, move on from that. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Give me one second. All right, my lovelies, let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, in regards to love and romance. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Libra, we have the Three of Swords, the Knight of Wands, and the Three of Wands. Okay, Libra. So what I'm seeing here is... There is definitely some type of heartbreak for some of you guys. It could be that there is some type of separation or some type of, some type of distance here. I feel like the energy of this person is very inconsistent. This is a person that switches like that. Um, and it's almost in an aggressive way. So this person could potentially have like anger issues or this person could be very impulsive, very like they don't really sit there and anal analyze what they're going to express. So a lot of the time how they express, especially if it's an anger, it's very demeaning, very disrespectful. You deserve better than that, Libra. And I'm going to be honest, if you're dealing with the situation where the person goes in and comes back and goes out back and forth, um, this is a person that cannot give you the commitment or the loyalty that you're looking for. So keep it pushing. If this is a situation where you found out that they were dealing with someone else and there is like, oh, I promise you that I'm going to be better. I'm going to do better. 
da 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 and you're sitting there waiting, right, for them to show you through actions, they're not going to show you Libra. Move on from this energy. This person is not, definitely not the energy that you want. Um, it's almost like they promise and promise and they just cannot deliver. This is a person that promises knowing damn well that they cannot deliver. So you don't want this energy. It's very immature energy. And like I said, if you've already dealt with the situation where this person has let you down and you keep giving them opportunity after opportunity, you have to understand that we teach others how we want to be treated by what we allow them to do to us. And if this person didn't respect you the first time, they're not going to respect you the second, third, or fourth. Why? Because you keep dealing with it. So what they're telling you is it's time to expand your horizons. It's time for you to uh, stop waiting. If you are waiting for communication, the communication is going to happen. But it doesn't mean that it's going to be something, you know, stable. It doesn't mean that they're going to... Um, all of a sudden overnight change. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is, yeah, they're going to communicate to see if they can come back into your life. And the more you allow them to, the more they're going to waste your time. So not a good match for you, Libra. My advice is move on to better things. Now let's look into your ex here. We have the nine of cups <clears throat> or ex lover. Queen of Pentacles and the Star card. So I see this person um, from your past. It's like you were the one person that got away or you were the person that they always wanted. Maybe they didn't realize in the moment, but I feel like now they're very aware. I feel like they're definitely coming back around. Now, for some of you Libras, what I'm hearing is this is not necessarily an ex-partner. This could be a, a connection with someone that you were very excited about. Maybe you were like the, the connection was immediate. You were vibing. Something could have happened or there could have been some type of distraction. For some of you guys, it could be that the other person that you're dealing with came in and it's like they got your whole attention and you forgot about this person from the past or this person you were initially interested in. But I feel like this connection is being given another opportunity. Now, it doesn't have to be the way I'm saying it. For some of you guys, this could be an ex. If you're dealing with a new person from the new reading we've seen and it's not going well, this person from your past is coming back around and they're coming back around because they've realized that you are who they always wanted or that they're willing to win you over. Nine of Cups and the star is like, I'm wishing, I'm praying, almost manifesting you. And the Queen of Pentacles is the possibility for the structure of that to bear fruit. So again, if you're dealing with a person that got away, perhaps it wasn't a lover, perhaps it wasn't your boyfriend or girlfriend, it could have been just a connection that was very exciting in the beginning, but something happened. I see you guys either being around each other or bumping into each other. And it's almost like having a restart. Um, so not necessarily a negative thing. Now for others of you, if it is your ex, they are definitely coming back around. And I feel very strongly like in the month of probably the middle of May, I see them going out of their way to, to try to either talk to you or to try to bump into you. This could be them going out, trying to be proactively, trying to be around your friends or family members, people that they know that by them talking to or being around, there's a possibility that they would bump into you. And that's what I'm seeing here. So the ball is in your court, Libra. All right, my lovelies, now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio in regards to love and romance. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Scorpio, you have the Seven of Swords, the Magician, and the Moon. Okay. Okay. If you're dealing with a person that constantly promises you 
constantly tells you like, yes, uh, Scorpio, I'm going to take you out. It's going to be the best night ever. And then all of a sudden, last minute, they're like, oh, I can't make it. I have to work or I can't make it. I have this that's coming up or whatever. There's a lot of inconsistency here. What Spirit is telling you is listen to your intuition, Scorpio, and your intuition is definitely not wrong right now. This is like horrible type of energy. This is a person that likes to portray that they're very put together, that their life is great, but this is a person that could be very conniving. This is a person that's very manipulative. See past that. Now, Scorpios, you guys have a keen intuition, very powerful intuition. But a lot of the times when you guys get very excited about a connection, whether it's because of the physical physical attraction or because you feel like you are at a point where like a point of no return, you're emotionally invested, you constantly let those red flags like wave all over the place and you pretend you don't see them. You try to hope for the best. But what Spirit is telling you here is that look at the signs. Like they are being shown to you. This person is inconsiderate. This person is inconsistent. This is a charlatan. Um, what we call people that portray themselves to be a certain way, but they are the complete opposite. This is not good energy, Scorpio. So if you're just recently dealing with someone like this, show them the door. If it's a situation where you've been dealing with this person um, and they kind of floored you, they kind of went above and beyond in the very beginning, you're holding on to that idea of who you thought they were. They're not that person and that person's not coming back. This is something that they do as a form of manipulation. So don't sit there waiting. I'm hoping that this person is going to show me who they were when I first met them. Well, no, they're not because they weren't that person. So do not waste your time, Scorpio. Like, look at the signs that are being shown to you. Listen to your intuition. If you feel something is wrong, it's because it is. And this person is just not for you. All right, my lovelies. Now let's look into your ex-lover or ex-partner. We have the tower here, the 10 of cups and the queen of wands. For some of you guys, it could have been a situation where just where you just recently found out either that this person is living with someone or that they married uh, their partner. It could have been a situation where there was a very recent separation or breakup and all of a sudden, boom, they're dating someone else. Um, I feel that this person is definitely over the relationship. They There's no emotional investment in you at this point. I feel like this is a, it's giving me the energy of petty type of energy, like they flaunt it. So if you're dealing with an ex-partner that would casually message you, but then all of a sudden they post that they're so happy and they're in love on their social medias, it's bullshit. This is a person that just likes to, you know, make the world think that their life is very put together and very happy. Um, but even in that relationship, their partner is like lacking something. So it's either lacking stability or lacking foundation. Um, I feel like this person has a tendency of rushing into things. So you dodged a bullet here, Scorpio, because this is a bit of chaotic energy, a person that is very impulsive, someone that is very, likes to play with people's emotions. And not only that, but likes to pretend that they're happy. So if you ended in bad terms with this person because they moved on very quickly or because maybe they even stepped out of the relationship, I feel like if you just found out that they're in a relationship, like it's not just recent you're just finding out about it now. So my advice is keep it pushing. This person um, didn't deserve you, point blank. All right. Now let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Give me three cards for new love. Give me three cards for old flame. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. See what's going on with Sagis, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, New Love, as well as Old Flame. Three cards for each spirit. Thank you. Okay, 
here we go. All right, Sagittarius. First card here is the Nine of Cups, Two of Pentacles, and your card, Temperance. <clears throat> All right, Sagittarius. What I'm seeing here is kind of like not getting the wish fulfillment, not getting what you thought you were getting. Um, for some of you guys, it's almost like if you're experiencing that there's a lot of like inconsistency, especially like in the recent past couple of weeks, maybe the past three weeks, for some of you guys, this could be two months, um, where there is like this feeling of dissatisfaction. And I feel like it's on both ends. It's not just with you, Sagittarius. Um, so it's almost like dealing with a new person that comes into your life and you kind of overhype them in your head. The more you spend time with them, the more you get to know them, either you realize that you guys have nothing in common or you realize that they are nothing of what you thought they were. Um, so there is almost like a feeling of holding on to it just to see what happens but not really being committed to it. Now, this could be vice versa. This could be them uh, that are not necessarily telling you that there's like really not much connection, but they're not really trying to move it forward anymore, the connection. And it's because there's like a there's dissatisfaction. Someone in this connection was not being their authentic self or you, um, Sagittarius, could have fallen like I said, you overhype them in your head and now it's like kind of trying to figure out a way of getting out of it because you're very dissatisfied or very displeased. My advice, if you're dealing with this type of energy and you want to see, you're holding on because you want to see if it something will come from it. Uh, what Spirit is telling you is that no, at this point, what they're showing you is that you are being more mature, more emotionally mature to be aware when there's no connection or when there's no synchronization or no balance, you know, perfect balance or harmony in a connection. That's the reason why it's becoming very loud as time progresses. So if you are unsatisfied or unhappy in this connection and it's just recent, get out of it before it becomes something, you know, more long term. Um, because then that's when we know that if there is you know, certain aspects about you that are not being fulfilled or that are not being met in the connection, you know, what can you expect later on? And it's on both sides. So again, if you're dealing with this type of energy, my advice for you is figure out what it is that you want, Sagittarius, because for some of you guys, it could be that you were single for a while, then you got into this connection and you got excited about it but then you don't kind of want to deal with what it is to be in a relationship. So it's more, I feel like it has more to do with having to internalize where you're at at this point in your life and what it is that you really want. Perhaps you've realized that what you thought you wanted at some point is not what you want now. And that's the reason why you feel like your needs are not being met. Um, but be honest, be honest, because by being honest and by, like I said, acknowledging I'm aware that I'm unhappy in this situation or I'm aware that we don't really have a very deep connection, then you're able to weed out and stop wasting your time on people that do, are not going to progress into anything. Um, and then it gives you the focus to bring it back to you and to really give yourself the opportunity to be happy. So again, don't settle, Sagittarius. All right, now let's look into the old love here. We have the King of Cups the Nine of Swords, and the Knight of Wands. These cards feel very familiar. I think I pulled that out. Not sure if it was for Taurus or Gemini. One of those signs. <clears throat> so you may be dealing with one of those signs. Um, but I feel like the person that, the person from your past is definitely not over you, Sagittarius. I feel like they're going to, try to reach out, but I feel that the communication happens more along the end of April. There is a lot of anxiety in regards to losing you. I feel like it has more to do with like 
the fear of the freedom that you have now. So for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been broken up for quite a while, I feel like it hadn't hit them the way it's hitting them now that they're realizing, well, Sagittarius is free now and they could do whatever they want and I have no say in it and I'm not okay with that. That's the type of energy that I'm getting. So it's like very macho type of energy, whether it's a female or masculine, doesn't matter. It's like selfish type of energy. So I feel like you may be hearing from them, like I said, more along the lines of the end of April. But if you do hear from them, don't try to run with that thinking that, yeah, they're going to give you some type of commitment or they're going to be like, I'm ready to like, let's give it a try. I don't see that. I feel like it has more to do with selfishness here and the fact that they see you as a prize. So by me going back to Sagittarius, if they take me, that means that obviously they're still hung up on me type of thing. But they're, it doesn't mean that they're going to be consistent. So my advice is if you do hear from them and you hear from them almost at the end of April, um, if you're on to other things, give your attention to the new prospects. Don't waste your time in this energy. All right, my lovelies. Now let's keep it pushing. Now let's go with Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with my Cappy, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Give me three cards to represent you love and three cards to represent old flame. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, Cappies. Here we go. All right, in regards to new love, we have the Justice card, Two of Cups, Five of Wands. Wow. Powerful energy here, Capricorn. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Libra. For others of you, there is a there is a karmic cycle or person that you're dealing with. So for a lot of you guys, if you are dealing with a Libra or if you're single right now, do not be surprised if a Libra comes into your life. This is a soulmate type of connection, but I feel like there is still energy clinging from the past that was either a karmic cycle or a karmic relationship. For some of you, if you were dealing with the Libra in the past, and you've been moved on. I feel like they haven't moved on. And there is something of. There is almost like competition. That you're even unaware of. Competition in regards to you. So this is giving me the energy of them finding out that either you're getting a lot of attention. Or that there's been a glow up with you. Or that you're making waves and they're hearing about it and they're wanting to come back into your life. I feel the competition is what's pushing them, like pushing them to get out of the hermit mode um, and for them to pop out again. But it's like I said, for some of you guys. For some of you guys, this is a, a soulmate connection. It's speaking to me about Okay, I get it now. Okay, thank you, Spirit. So what I'm seeing is for those of you Capricorns out there that have dealt with a lot of inconsistencies regarding relationships. I feel like you're still holding on to someone from the past that is not necessarily what's best for you. And around this time frame, there's a new person that's coming in. And this is a soulmate connection for some. For others of you, this is the person that is meant to be in your life. It's like they're restoring the karmic debt in your love life. So it's almost like a clearing of energy from anything that you've ever experienced in the past up until now. This is a new cycle. So you will be tested in the aspect of if you recently met someone or connected with someone and the connection is very strong and they are doing everything right, 
but you still have that person that either you haven't moved on from or that you're still holding on to, listen to what I'm telling you. Move on from that energy, Capricorn, because right now I feel like it's pivotal. I feel like that's the reason why I was trying to figure out, okay, is this a new person? Is this a person from the past? Spirit's like, no, no. They're finishing a cycle, whether you've had bad luck and love, whether you've dealt with a lot of like karmic backlash, whether you've dealt with a lot of unrequited love, like you put your heart out in the line and they always took you for granted or they didn't appreciate or you felt like every relationship you've ended, you've always felt like you were left empty handed. That is being cleared. And this new person that's coming in is meant to be in your life. For some of you, this is either a person that is connected to the legal system. So it could be like an example. It could be a cop. It could be a lawyer. It could be a judge. It could be a politician. It could be a person that works with the law. Um... I feel like this is the most mature energy you've ever dealt with. Um, And again, like I said, if you're dealing or the ex is still clinging along or just around your energy, when this person comes into your life, make the decision, Capricorn, to choose to be happy. Okay? No matter what your ex is going through, stop sacrificing yourself. You have the right to be happy. You have the right to want what's better for you. Now, like I said, I am hearing just the system. So justice and the system. So again, this could be a person that is in any of those fields. For others of you, it could be that you meet this person in court, or it could be that you meet this person, um, something that has to do with the law. For some of you guys, it could be that you're in school. It could be that you're in college. It could be that you're taking some type of Uh, training or whatnot that is going to bring more balance into your life or to your work life. Um, But I am hearing very strongly that this is a new cycle. This is a new, more mature type of energy. But you have to be careful not to gamble it, not to put it in faith and be like, well, my ex is coming back around. Maybe this time we'll get it right. They're telling you to choose yourself and they're telling you to choose what's best for you. All right, Capricorn, powerful messages there, you guys. Okay, so in regards to your ex or the person from your past, we have the Seven of Cups, Judgment, and King of Swords. The ex is definitely regretful. They're definitely feeling like they misstepped or like they took you for granted. There is judgment here. There is a decision that was made, and I feel them very much in their head. Again, we have another King of Swords here. We're talking about, you know, with the justice in your new love, uh, could be potentially that that is right at the pivotal moment. For some of you guys, it could be that you recently separated or broke up with the with this ex-partner. You made that decision because you were choosing yourself, Capricorn. If that's the case and that's relating, just know that this new person is coming into your life because of that decision you made. So it could potentially be the best decision you've ever made. This person is the ex or the person from the past is all over the place. I feel like this person just is not capable of reciprocating the effort or energy that you put towards this connection. At this point, you've sacrificed enough Capricorn. You deserve to be happy. So give yourself the opportunity to be happy elsewhere, my lovelies. All right. Now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. All right, here we go, Aquarius. In regards to new love, we have the Strength card, the Four of Swords, and the Five of Pentacles. Okay. 
Okay, Aquarius, I feel like there could have been some type of misunderstanding or miscommunication where there is a feeling of rejection here. Um, I feel like it wasn't intentional. For some of you guys, it could be that you came off too strong. You came off too prideful. Um, you could have been dealing with the person that was perhaps extremely sensitive or a person that takes everything very personal. And they felt like this can, doesn't have the potential for something long term. Um, because of your because of your tempers. I feel like both your tempers are very, very different. Um, they seen you as very explosive and they didn't want to continue or they don't want to continue this connection because they feel like you guys just can't get on the same page. Um, I'm going to be honest. I feel like you could have intimidate them, Aquarius, or you could have came off very pompous, very know-it-all type of energy this is not going to connect with everyone, but what I am hearing is learning the difference between being confident and being arrogant. So there's a very thin line in that. Um, sometimes we try to overcompensate for our insecurities. I feel like this person triggered you. Um... They could have triggered certain aspects of you that are unhealed. I feel like you're taking this rejection very personal. Um, but again, the understanding that we all have different ways of loving. We all are taught in early childhood very different how to love depending on the upbringing that we had. So... If someone's not able to communicate or express their love language the way you do, two things happen. Either you or the other person has the desire to want to learn that love language. And if they don't, and if you also are in your ego or your pride and you're like, I don't really need to figure that out, you know, then you're going to go about life not really connecting with people on an emotional level. Because you're not feeling comfortable or being okay with being vulnerable. And part of being in a relationship is being vulnerable. So this could connect and relate to you guys in many different aspects. For some of you, it could be that you have a tendency of over ex overextending yourself. And because of those experiences, you're at a point where they either meet me here, right? Or, or it doesn't work because I'm not going to meet them halfway. If that's your mentality, then you've already made up the, the, you've already made up your mind about not giving them the opportunity. So why feel disappointed when it doesn't work out, when you didn't allow them to connect with you? Do you see what I'm saying? So having to, now, if you're doing this because, like I said, because you overextend yourself and people have hurt you in the past and you're protecting yourself, I get it 100%. But also taking those, the past hurt, right? Taking that into your current experience is going to be a reflection of how you give and how you receive love as well. So there are parts of you that need to be healed, Aquarius, in order for you to be able to like I said, give yourself the opportunity, give the other person the opportunity. Now, if this was you, the one that really challenged them and pushed them, um, pushing and pushing, and you expecting them to chase after you, and then if it's a healthy, mature person, they're not going to chase because they're going to be like, okay, I've been hurt too doesn't give me the, you know, doesn't give me the right to be a jerk off. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? What they're telling you here is that this connection didn't move forward or it will not move forward because there is pride 
or there is hurt that you in some way try to portray it as pride, but it's really because you're hurt. So my advice would be, obviously, if this person wasn't willing to like, you know, try to win you over or try to op- have you open up to them, then obviously this person wasn't for you. But I feel like this is still a lesson in the understanding that, yes, it's good to be prideful sometimes. Yes, it's good to be confident. Yes, it's good to be guarded because it doesn't allow just anyone to walk all over you. But don't keep your wall so high that it makes it unfair for the next person to come along that has also experienced what you've experienced and they still have to prove themselves. It's a two-way street, okay? I hope that made sense. Now let's go to your ex person or the person from your past. I keep getting pride, you guys. Um, It's giving me the energy of the person from your past or your ex-partner obviously still hung up on you, but it's like they gave up or they let pride take the best of them. And now it's at a point where it's at a point where They've realized or they've came to the understanding that you were what was best for them, but it's like they just wouldn't budge. Um, even if they are in a relationship, even if you're dealing with the, per- the person from your past, even if that person has a relationship, I feel like they're not completely fulfilled the way they make it to, or the way they make it seem. It's almost like a facade. It's almost like they're trying to show the world that they're so happy. But deep down, they're still hurting because of the loss of this relationship. So has this person moved on? No, because even if they are in a connection or in another relationship, it's a facade that they're putting on. It's like the happy face that they're putting on, but they're still like they're still hurting over the breakup, but I feel like that's something that they would never accept or they would never say out loud. Like, yeah, I still miss Leo. Like, no, they would never. And it's because of ego or because of pride. Um, For some of you guys, it could be that it, you know, there was a desire to want to connect on both sides, but you guys let pride get in the way. Um, I feel like this is a person that is very stuck in their ways and they've been this way forever. So my advice is you dodged a bullet, uh, Leo, definitely not the energy, not any uh, easy energy to deal with. And like I said, you dodged a bullet here. If a person, let me tell you something. If a person, right, is too prideful to seek out their happiness, And that's the only thing that holds them back. This is a person that is vibrating from a very, very low vibration. This is a person that is willing to sacrifice their happiness, that is willing to sacrifice their life itself or the meaning of life because of pride. And that's usually the people that become very unhappy, very bitter, and very cynical. Anyways, heavy energy right there, Leo. All right. Sorry, Aquarius. I don't know why I said Leo. Some of you guys may be dealing with the Leo. (laughs) All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's look into their love life. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Pisces, we have... Oh, pulled out two cards. All right, Pisces, we have the Strength, the Ace of Wands, and the Judgment card. All righty, Pisces. There is definitely a lot of intensity in this connection. Uh, For some of you guys, you may be dealing with the Leo. For others, you may be dealing with a Fire Energy, Leo, Sag, or Aries. There is a lot of physical attraction. There's a lot of 
chemistry here, but I'm going to be honest with the judgment card. I feel like for a lot of you, the importance of this connection or of this relationship has a lot to do with what other people think or what you want people to think. So I don't feel like it's genuine connection. I feel like it has more to do with the possibility or how this person makes you look. For some of you guys, it could have been that you rushed into this connection. Um, but just because I see the Ace of Wands and the Strength card, I feel like this has the potential for chaos, you guys, because it's a lot of fire energy and that would usually indicate to me very explosive type of energy that you can't really control or like when it's when it becomes toxic. Um because it's so intense, because it's so passionate. Um, there is a lot of stubbornness in this connection. Like I said, I do see that there is genuine connection, physical connection, sorry. Um, but with the judgment, I feel like, I feel like either a lot of people are too involved in this connection or you care too much about what others think of this relationship or this person. Um, and just like I, you know, if you've been following me for a while, you know what I think about hot and heavy as quickly as it, you know, turns on, that's how quickly it burns out. So I feel like, especially if you have other people being very involved or very like into the connection, very involved in your relationship, even if it's just beginning, I feel like there is a lot of, it's drawing in a lot of attention and not the good type of attention because it's very fiery type of energy. Um, now for others of you, this could indicate, those of you guys that are single, this can indicate a fire energy coming into your life. Like I said, Sag, Aries, Leo uh, type of energy coming in. But for some of you, this person can actually be younger than you. And that could be the reason why you feel a bit guarded or you feel concerned about how you want to proceed because it's like a taboo type of thing. Um, it's almost like a feeling of putting too much pressure on yourself because of what others think or what they may say or what they may you know, judge you on. If you're experiencing this, um, Pisces, my personal advice don't give a shit. At the end of the day, people are going to talk. At the end of the day, you need to worry and concern yourself about making yourself happy. And if the person that you're with is fulfilling every aspect that you, you know, crave and desire in a partner and they're doing all of that for you, then that's all that matters. And anyone outside of that shouldn't matter. Now, if they're giving you advice because they see how toxic and how explosive this is, then maybe it's time for you to internalize that and sit with that for a bit because it could go both ways. Um, like I said, if you are dealing with a person that is younger than you or a person that perhaps has a different background, uh, there is something about worrying or concerning yourself about people or people talking. And if that's the case, like I said, just remember that at the end of the day, all that matters is that the person that you're with makes you happy. Um, the rest is really between you two. Um, but it is, if it is a situation where it's very steamy, very explosive, or this person has tantrum or some type of anger issues or whatnot, and it's affecting or it's reacting in an aspect of like even a family setting, then it's time you internalize and realize, is it really worth it? Is it worth, um, dealing with this type of energy where you know everyone's going to get involved or have something to say because you're putting it on display, whether it's you or the other person that's putting it on display. Um, so like I said, it could go both ways, you guys. Best of luck to that. Now let's see ex-partner or ex-person from the past. We have the Queen of Pentacles at the Tower and the Ten of Swords. So this person's definitely moved on. I feel like they had some type of recent um, enlightenment or some recent experience that made them really open their eyes up or realize that this has definitely came to its conclusion or it's came to an end. 
I feel like they are gracefully taking the loss or gracefully taking the hit. And I say hit because Tower does give me kind of chaotic energy. Could have been a sudden breakup, could have been a sudden, you know, ending that was not necessarily on the best terms. But I feel like they are or will be getting to the point of being gracefully out of your life or gracefully understanding that this relationship has came to an end. So I don't see the potential for anything here. And I don't see like they're going to cling on you or like they're going like you will be hearing from them. I don't see that. I feel like they are finally taking the loss. And I say loss because Tower is always very heavy energy. It's very transformative and sometimes transformation is not necessarily beautiful at least it doesn't feel that way um it's very painful especially with the ten of swords but i feel like they've been through that or they're settling with the feeling of that painfully having to accept it's come to an end all right my lovelies all right and finally with my lovely aries Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these readings, definitely like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's go, Aries. Here we go. All right. In regards to new love, we have the Five of Pentacles the chariot and the devil card. Okay. So what I'm seeing here, Aries, is for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a situation where you feel like you're often the one that has to chase or you're the one that has to kind of fish for attention. Um, this is what I'm hearing. If you have the, if you often have to send a text to remind someone of you, then take your energy elsewhere because the five of pentacles indicates to me feeling left out in the cold, feeling like you're being ignored and the chariot is, they'll ignore you for a while and then they'll come in heavy, right? They'll come in and love bomb you and whatnot. And then they go again. And this is a tactic move. You're dealing with the person that is very manipulative. You're dealing with the person that is very, loves to be in control. So I feel like if you're dealing with a situation where right now you feel like the ball is definitely not in your court, you feel like you have to go above and beyond to get their attention and the feeling of maybe even feeling like they are very controlling in the way of like how they express or how they communicate with you. Okay, so what I'm hearing is as an example, if you reach out and you're like, hey, I haven't heard from you, and then they respond to you very aggressive, like, well, damn, I was busy and like, here you go again, da 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 da. That is toxic behavior. And this is a person, like I said, that has an issue with controlling and being toxic. So you don't want to continue dragging this type of energy. My advice is take your beautiful ass somewhere else, uh, Aries. And I feel like I don't need to tell you guys this, but somehow this is what's showing up in the reading. So I'm not sure if you're dealing with a, to a toxic partner or a person that has, like I said, has a tendency of ghosting you, then they come back around and they come hard and you think finally it's something that's going to be constant, but then you're being left feeling like you're still asking for too much or somehow you're the one that's the problem. Like that's how they make you feel. Um, when all you were really wondering is if they were safe or if they made it home type of thing. So if that's what you're dealing with, show them the door areas. You deserve better than that. And you deserve someone to be as obsessed as you are with them. And if they're not, and obviously it's not reciprocated, then walk away from that. Do yourself that favor, Aries, because I feel like this person is hella toxic. All right, now let's look into the ex-partner or ex-lover. We have the Page of Wands, we have the Hermit, and we have the Death card. Wow, okay. So 
Aries, I feel like you're going to be, you're definitely going to be hearing from them. I feel like they've had recently some type of transformation that recently happened. Um, for some of you guys, maybe you're already seeing this. So as an example, if the partner that you're with was very inconsistent, as an example, with their jobs, let's say they went from one job to another, um, they couldn't like be stable, like for the sake of them. Um, and maybe you've been hearing lately, like they're getting their shit together. They're being more stable. They're doing good. Um, something about them is like, it's changing. And the reason for it is because they've recently gone through some type of transformation where they're either enlightened or life taught them lessons. And I see them stepping up in a positive way. I see them stepping up in the aspect of changing their ways so if this was a situation where you've been hoping for them to change, to be genuine and authentic with you, um, or if you're hoping for some type of reconciliation here, I feel like the possibility of reconciliation may be here because death does speak about transformation. Obviously, you guys are broken up. So if you're already broken up and the death shows up, then there is a change in that status. So again... For some of you guys, it could potentially be some type of possibility, right? But with the hermit, I feel like they've acknowledged or realized um, that perhaps they were immature in the past and there's a desire to want to change that aspect about them. But I feel like if you do hear from them, you will be hearing from them. From now, I want to say all the way to the end of April, if after that you don't hear from them, I feel like at that point, they're ready to go into the next cycle of their life. So there is a desire to reach out to you, Aries. There is a desire of wanting to talk or talk things out or um, ending good terms is what I'm hearing. So for some of you guys, if this was a situation that things you feel like things were left unsaid, you may get the opportunity to make your peace mend the, you know, mend the, mend the fences type of thing. Um, for real reconciliation, I feel like both of you guys are, or have moved on, um, have moved on to better versions of yourself. I hope that makes sense. Um, so again, I do see that there's a desire of reaching out, but I feel like it has more to do, especially if you feel like there is an apology that was needed for you to actually get closure. I feel like you will be getting that this month, uh, Aries. All right, my lovelies. Well, that is it for now. I hope that you guys enjoyed the readings and I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.